when mapping something it's well usually a good idea to remember what Einstein said that everything is relative and we see these numbers here the scale numbers but they don't mean much to anyone who hasn't mapped before so usually you need a reference so you know what is the size you're working with so what I usually do is that I plop in one artificial intelligence AI so that I know that okay this is the size of uh, one human person in the map and now we see that we want to decide what is the size of the one module and we see that if one person if, uh, is of this size then we m might want to make it so that one module is the size of a well one floor of a building so that's why I then choose 128 units high uh, brush for the geometry also I make it 128 units wide and 8 units thick the idea is to uh, then use this size as the reference and then now I can find the AI in here Oh, about the controls if you want to select something you press shift and left mouse button it selects if you want to create brushes you have nothing selected and you just drag the mouse and you will create them and in order to move in the camera view you press the camera view with right mouse button and then you can use the arrow keys to move around very simple once you learn them how to do it and as pressing ESC will um, unselect everything so here is our first module in our plan the idea was to make the module of stone so we can then find a stone texture I press N and go media and textures and dark mode folder contains all the materials in uh, nice categories I am usually using stone brick and then there was the gray one which looks nice one moment <coughs> that one and now we see that the texture scaling is very unappealing if we look at the human and the texture the texture is way too small no bricks are gonna be like your size of the, your hand so we need to retexture or rescale the texture so I select the block and I press S which opens the surface inspector and I can simply pre press fit button now it looks hmm looks better. I could imagine blocks being of that size so I think it's okay. And now we have completed the first module which was the module with, with, with no features on it. They will be used in for these walls. Okay, next let's make the next module. I put it here. Oh, in order to duplicate things you select them and you press space and it generates a new one and also pressing backspace will delete them so this is good to remember so next we want to make the window module here the idea was to use this round window so in order to make it we need to cut a hole in this brush and for the cutting we are using this clipper tool it works so that you click somewhere you click somewhere and you put the zero pointer and you click again and you put one po uh, pointer and now it's gonna cut everything you have chosen between these two points and in, or in order to do the cutting you press shift plus enter and now it cut it the um, brush and now we see that okay I have one two three four five units and I want to cut this same way like this and also usually the windows big ones they start from the well, well close to waist size so I cut it here and then I cut it let's make them symmetrical four units from here now I have made 
a cut to the um, module piece. And, <coughs> and now it's simple to just I press number keys control the size of the uh, grid. Usually I operate in grid number 4 so all the cubes here are 8 units wide. Now I can go to smaller amount, amount and even smaller and I just push this back. In order to make these rescalings you just press left mouse button while you have the brush selected and move the mouse and you can then adjust the, uh, the thickness of the brush. Or it depends on the viewport you're operating. You can also change the uh, wi wi width of the part. Okay. Now I see it's not very completely appealing, so I want to make maybe increase this and increase this a bit and make this accordingly. Now it looks nicer. But it's not a um, round window like this one. And in order to make that we need to make patches. So I can insert and end cap. So immediately it proposes to make a correct end cap sized correct sized end cap and then I move this here. Also these are operated the same way as as brushes. Usually these are um, if you look at medieval um, architecture you usually see that these arcs are usually like one third of the height so this is half and this is about one third also and now we have these ugly holes here I want to um, cap this patch so I can do it by choosing the patch and capping the selection and I get to choose from different kind of caps I want to use the inverted end caps as it fills these areas here like that and it fills it from the both sides so I can here see that it also has on this side filled it and I don't want this I don't need this part so I can just delete it um, if, you s if you're building and stuff come into way you can always choose something and press H and it hides, it doesn't delete it, it hides the geometry you chose and you can return it by pressing shift H this is very convenient to remember okay <coughs> now this arc is here but it looks ugly it has shader not found texture on it and I want to apply this same texture that is on this brush I want to apply it on this uh, section which is now selected and that can be done by pressing Control shift you can choose faces now that this is not a selected brush this is a selected face face can be identified by this mark and I can uh, copy the shader and now it saves this 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 uh, texture and its alignment and I can choose this and I can say paste shader and now I have the correct texture seamlessly fitting here. This texture doesn't look correct it probably was changed when I moved those rescaled those parts so I want to also make that to have I want to this entire thing have this same texture scaling and now it is there so it's seamless all the way next I have these cork textures here which don't look nice so I can apply the same texture there as well it looks reasonably okay and finally I have this arc I can also apply it but here you see that the texture looks very weird it looks weird because I have taken a face that is aligned in this direction and I'm applying it to a plane that goes in a another way so it's scaled incorrectly I can scale it correctly in the surface inspector I can either I can usually apply a natural um, scaling from here I can also change the scale if I want in order to make it good it's usually good to see how the bricks go in the texture now I can see that there is 
two row of bricks in the texture it's usually good to have one row of bricks going in the te texture like this so now there is um, mortar here and the bricks go in the middle it looks probably okay <coughs> and now we have a window wall almost ready but we don't have a window and we want to have a window here so we can choose, I chose the face of the brush that it is uh, embedded in the window the brush was this one I can choose it and then I can press N and find media and then we can look at the window folder for some textures maybe we want a round one those are too fancy for a bakery let's look for a nice but not too nice not church like no 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 Surely there would be a texture which what we oh these are nice these are these round top diamond patterns they're not too fancy they're not too ugly either and <coughs> because this is going to be an interior window we want it to be dark because it's dark outside and now we see that the texture is uh, incorrectly aligned I press S and I press fit and then uh, magically it becomes fully aligned and it's ready to go. So, we have now uh, successfully made the module with nothing and the module with the window. And note that because we fitted, fitted it the uh, original textures, these textures will be completely seamless. So I can just put these together and they will look nice. Oh, to multi-choose I can press shift down and press the uh, left mouse button and move and I can choose stuff. It chooses everything under the box. Okay, now we have completed the window and uh, the stuff we only need is the door. So I can copy the window module. And now the difficulty here is that we want this to be wide enough to accommodate the door. Unfortunately, we have door prefabs available so there are several and well this is maybe too small this is maybe too large so we want to go with the average size and then we can choose how many hinges there are I don't remember two hinges three hinges the other had less texture uh, skin options I think this two one was the one with more so I'm choosing that and we can see that, oh no, the window was um, too, uh, not wide enough, so the door is going to be bigger. So I can move the door to the center. Now it's center, I think it is. And then I can move it so that it's on the ground as well. And now we see what we must cut in order to make this door fit here. <coughs> I usually also when placing doors I go to the smallest grid, this grid 1, and then I press Ctrl G so that it snaps this current object to this grid. You saw it move it a big bit. So now it's correctly positioned for this grid. And this is the place we want to make the door in. And we don't need this. These are too uh, small, so I can move this one unit here, this one unit here, and this accordingly. And now we only have this uh, wall to remaining. We could use it as a decorative part, or then we could just get it rid of it. I'm thinking we just delete it at this point. And then <coughs> when you have doors, you usually do not have doors embedded in rock. They usually have some kind of wooden door frame. 
So an uh, easy way to do a wooden door frame is to uh, choose the smaller grid. You see that now this uh, 8 grid isn't uh, properly aligned with this. So if I want to cut it, I have to cut it here. If I go to 3, then I can make a nice 8 unit thick box here. So I will do that. I will cut it here. And then I will cut it here. And then I also cut it from this top part of the uh, door. Oh, and okay, I did it the incorrect way. I press Ctrl Z to go back. You see the mistake I made here. So I want to. Okay, I want to actually do it. I will need to do some correction now. I move these down and then I widen this like that. And now. If I cut it from this top part, I get a nice door frame made of stone, but that we can fix easily. So I select everything in the door frame, I press N, I go to media, and now we want to look at wooden structures, wood boards. This is dark rough, is the basic, basic, basic wood. It looks good. It does its, its job okay. And also, if you apply a 0.3 natural scale, it scales it to the thickness of a block that is 8 units wide. So now if I press S and I can move this texture, I can center this. So that the door is properly, the wood goes correctly in the doorway. This we see that the texture is going the wrong way, so we can turn it 45 degrees and now 90 degrees, and then we can move it to the correct position. Same thing here. Like that. Now we have a door frame. Not very difficult to do. We also have some chunk left over from the cutting process. Uh, this is actually the window base. We could delete it. Well, then we could use it, but I think I'll delete it and I'll show you how to make a Wiz portal. Wiz portal is needed for segmentation and e encapsulation of the of the areas. It sort of tells the engine what to draw and what not to draw. And usually you put Wiz portals in doorways because they are narrow choke of points. So I move this. I cloned now the top part then I move it so that it actually embeds it itself with the door. And then I shrink it so that it's smaller than the door. And now it's in the middle of the door. And then I can say that make wisp portal. And now if I hide this door and I have the wisp portals not um, <coughs> filtered out, I have a wisp portal here. So now when I'm making doorways in this mission, I can simply clone this entire bunch and I have a doorway with the door and the wisp portal already everything ready. And let's see how it goes. Okay, now we have all the three modu modules that are needed for the first floor, they are ready. At this stage it's usually a good idea to save your work. I will do that just now. I'm gonna use the bakery name here. Nice and descriptive. And let's do the final module required by the first floor and that was the the beam. Something to break up this boring monotonous uh, wall of stone. And I have already done the work. I just need this. Yes. And I can copy that, put it on the correct grid, and inspect that the texture goes all right in all directions, and it doesn't, actually. This is incorrect. I need to shift it a bit. Same thing here. <coughs> and actually, maybe I want to hide the door, and I notice that, oh no, these are wrong. I fix them also. 
like that. Now it looks good. Shift the edge. Then I will make the beam just some simple support beam. It goes to the ceiling. And these are used for uh, turning the rotating objects quickly in 90 degrees. And that's a support beam almost ready. Now I only need the 45 degrees. I can copy this, then I will decrease it in size, and then I can um, make it be make it a bit shorter, and then I will rotate and scale, rotate, not this one, not that one, this one, 45 degrees, and then I can stick it in. Maybe it should be a bit longer. Maybe it should be more like this. Yeah. And now it's too short, but I can fix that by using these. I can select the edges of things and I can drag them so I can make it longer. Now we have the support beam ready. Simple. Oh, this should be also fixed. It's usually good to fix, good idea to fix the module so that it's as in as good condition as possible. And then when you're <coughs> cloning it everywhere, you're multiplying your mistakes. So always make sure that the module is as perfect as possible before starting to work more with it. Good. Then the next job, say. The next job was to make the upper level geometry, the modules. And, well, because we are lazy, we can use these as starting points. So I'm just gonna clone them all. And I move them, let's move them here. That's a good position. Then I can just replace the textures. The idea was to use plaster and <coughs> wood. So let's see what we have in the plaster department. Lots of different kinds. Maybe a framed plaster is nice. Hmm. Maybe this one. No. And it fits perfectly because we had the texture already scaled or fitted to this piece. It should work for these as well. <coughs> it does, but the window of course looks crap. And this. Hmm. Yeah, it might work. I think it's so. It's ter not terrible. This window is terrible. Something needs to be done. So, in my initial plan, there was square window. So let's make a square one. I delete that, and then I can, well, make necessary adjustments. I can maybe. I should use. Hmm. Yeah. If the window was cli to be climbable then it needs to be bigger. So, I don't know if the player can climb 48 units, but let's make it bigger. And a square one, 64, 64, sounds good. Fixing the other pieces. And now the window looks terrible, but we can choose, or we will choose. Oh, easy way to go to different kinds of uh, textures is to choose and copy the shader. And now I go to Windows, and now can I can choose another one. Prefer preferably... Well, this looks nice, actually. 
I haven't used that. Used this before. Looks pretty nice. Let's use that. And then we need to fix this plaster wall just by copying it and play pasting. And I don't think this uh, stone will look good for this, so I can steal a bit of the wood texture here. Copy shader, and then I can apply it here, not on the window, but on the on the walls like that. It's misaligned. Don't want those. That's no, correct. Hmm. I still don't like it. It's too sharp. So what I can also do is to do the same thing we did with the door. So maybe make some frames for the window out of wood it might look more natural that way oh dear That's incorrect <coughs> need to do one cut cut in here and cut in there and then we can apply the wood texture here and it's almost correct better rotate good and now it looks like it's like real so the window isn't directly attached to the plaster it's attached to a full wooden frame we just made I think it looks so much better now yeah now we have completed all the upper level texture uh, modules. We can use this support beam for the top part as well. So all the modules are ready. Next we can start making the floor plans.